So good afternoon, Yuka. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. I wanted to have a quick chat with you. We can talk about announcement we got last week at Ignite about power effects. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that announcement? Well, it's funny. It's a very big announcement uh, in the local world, but then again, they didn't launch any new features at all. So it's kind of a mixed bag. I'm sure that people who are coming from the dynamic side, they don't really see that, okay, what's the big fuss there? But I think that's, uh, I mean, as far as the kind of credibility of uh, power apps goes, then it's a major step forward. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I'm wondering, when do we get something new to touch and to use and to do things with, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, we do have the uh, initial roadmap right now about there being new features uh, like tune time frame for modern apps. But uh, even there, I mean, all these uh, new features for like uh, doing PowerFX in plugins, then it's not really something that I can put my head around yet on what, how it's going to change change the everyday life of app makers. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's like the story behind Power Apps or the kind of reason why it exists is pretty obvious. Because I mean, we've seen how the, for example, the solution framework, how that has now taken over the, the broader stack of uh, Power Platform uh, starting from point where all the apps or products have their different item stories or no story at all there. So I'm figuring that our effects is going to be a similar kind of a unification story for bringing together the, the accessibility story or the app maker business logic story. So it had to happen at some point. And now I'm glad that they took the initiative to like to it right at this point uh, before we have a wider kind of spaghetti of different ways to define business logic in the, in the Power Platform. Yep, that makes sense. Um, question for you. How is this different from other code options, I suppose? What makes this low code versus just writing code? Because C Sharp is an abstraction of something else, right? So how is this any different? Well, I say that it's, uh, I mean, personally, I don't have any development background, so I can't really write code for any custom projects. So, uh, but then compared to the the formulas that Canvas apps has had then, I mean, it's been a safe environment for no code people like me to then like take steps into actually yeah, describing business logic in uh, via writing text, by having a proper syntax that you have to follow there. So uh, I think that uh, in a way, if you compare it to like uh, using resources from Azure or using the resources from Power Platform, then this is kind of the uh, the sort of power user level of where you can uh, give the keys to the car, but you know you're not going to wreck yourself there by driving off a cliff or something like that. So it feels like a, a safe enough environment for me to do something that I didn't previously have the tools to actually make happen. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm not a code person. I, um, there are people for that. and It doesn't have to be me, right? Mm -hmm. So do you think that PowerFX is a good enterprise story or is it pretty much a citizen developer story or who's going to benefit the most from this? I think that there's actually more emphasis right now on the enterprise story there uh, on practical level because uh, well I've been looking at some of the reactions uh, coming from developers on like Slashdot and Reddit so about the announcements and of course I mean people are going to jump for joy the ones that actually do write like real code and now uh, now this uh, Kind of Excel variant of code has been introduced there. So uh, yeah, there is probably going to like, it's going to meet the coders halfway, but really the story there is around uh, kind of getting, giving credibility to the to the way how you uh, uh, create complex business logic and UI features uh, in Power Apps. So uh, it makes total sense that it has a has an actual name there. You can reference that. You say that you built this while using this. And then of course you get to the, uh, the source code management story as well there. So it aligns nicely with the fact that the Canvas apps uh, source code is also becoming, let's say, uh, visible uh, for the uh, app makers and admins and people who are deploying the applications. Okay. So do you think that we have the risk of this continuing to grow and not being low code anymore, that we're going to have so many features and so many things thrown into it, that at what point is it going to be a bigger hurdle? I think it's, uh, I mean, PowerFX really is uh, about uh, 
giving us a way to manage the kind of inevitable complexity that you will get with these apps. So uh, I think it's been the same story with, uh, I mean, CRM implementations that you start small and then you grow up to be a maze of different kinds of integrations and uh, like uh, plugins and scripts and features. So uh, apps always be get more complex until they get re replaced with something that's more simple. So uh, I feel that uh, it's not really, it's not wrong to kind of uh, open up the can and show that actually there are these uh, uh, the lines of code that are, I mean, in a way, not any different from actual programming code written by developers who don't work within the kind of uh, uh, low code uh, world. So uh, yeah, it uh, does expose the potential uh, complexity of the apps a bit more to the app makers, but I'm pretty sure that Microsoft has a good story on like uh, having these, uh, let's say app templates and like way to get started small without really going into the uh, full blown PowerX FX editor and, and building your own formulas there and getting introduced to all the kind of IntelliSense way of like uh, typing in the, in the uh, text strings there. So it's like something that you can do, but uh, I'm pretty sure that, I mean, with all the templates in database for teams, for example, there's going to be so many ways you can use Power Apps without actually ever touching or like writing your own Power FX. So you mentioned CRM. You and I both come from an old school CRM background. The, you know, we begged for an XRM SKU for years and mm -hmm. that's what became model-driven app. So we're quite pleased with that. What is the story for us moving forward? Is PowerFX going to be something that just dramatically changes our lives or what do you think is going to happen there? I would say that PowerFX is really the driver there, but uh, of course the introduction of uh, Canvas apps and eventually then this kind of one UI that would then cover all the all the ways you can uh, build up these applications, then it's going to kind of force us into a territory where we are not just working with the traditional way to define business logic based on the processes of the, of the organization who uses the application, but rather taking more control over the kind of uh, the U UI level uh, functionality and I mean the how exactly things work, not just the reason why they have to be like this. So uh, well, it, it's it, it is a bit of a leap that you have to take, and uh, I've started really I mean do, doing more more and more kind of stuff just a couple of years ago, and uh, there's been a big learning curve for me, even though I had like ten years worth of XRM and modern apps experience uh, before that. So. Uh, but then again, the, the uh, kind of the promise of uh, having something like PowerFX there that's within your reach and works almost like Excel, then uh, I think it's also a good carrot for people to like push themselves beyond just the just the model, just like just being kind of confined into the way that Microsoft wants the apps to look. So uh, I see it as a uh, uh, kind of a, a positive learning curve that's ahead of for basically anyone who wants to keep keep uh, up to speed with uh, how the apps are being built today. Yes, I know that whenever I'm thinking about or envisioning with a client a new app, my mind always goes to model-driven first. Okay, so what's the data? And how are we going to expose mm. that? And there are probably just as many people now who envision it as a Canvas app first. And then the data model comes out of that. And so I guess it's just a different way of, a different view of things. Yeah, they're both right, and there's tools for both kind of approaches there. And the good thing with, with low code is that it's also a very kind of uh, low price to experiment with it. So you can build things uh, uh, as they work it up as fast as you can build a good mock up. So there's no harm in actually then like uh, experimenting with uh, different approaches, be it the data first or the UI first approach in app creation. Yep, absolutely. I agree. So any final words on PowerFX? Is there anything fun or exciting that you're looking forward to? Well, I think there's going to be lots of interesting uh, features on the roadmap this year already. So, uh, I mean, getting to the calculated fields and uh, other kind of like the, let's say, the fun features in modern apps that have been kind of confined to the graphical UI is going to be interesting to see what comes out of that. And then, of course, I mean, down the road, the biggest uh, kind of 
which I have for Parfix is the uh, getting into the, the power automate uh, side of the house. So kind of replacing all the all those very complex OData filters that are kind of keeping me away from building lots and lots of flows because I'm not really that confident with uh, my skills on on defining those kind of uh, those kinds of uh, strings there to uh, make the make the flows run. So uh, eventually, that's kind of my ultimate dream. I want to have I want to be confident also when building flows. But uh, for starters, I'll just uh, look at what I can do them more in the modern app side once they they reach. Uh, uh, availability in the product during this year. Well, thank you so very much for your time. And I think we're both looking forward to the continued evolution of the Power Platform. Definitely. Thanks for having me.